In this video, we will take a look at explaining the difference between forward prices and futures prices. Up until now, we have been very conveniently assuming that the two prices are equal or let's say very close to one another. But in reality, forward prices can deviate from the futures prices and the focus therefore of this video is to try and explore reasons why that might happen. Okay. Let's begin by taking a look at a construct that we will be using in the analysis that follows and that is the capitalization factor between two times t equal to 0 and t equal to capital T. If you remember our introductory readings in fixed income then the capitalization factor is basically the reciprocal of the discount factor. The capitalization factor you can think of it to be the future value at this time capital T of a dollar that has been invested into an interest earning account at time t equal to 0. Okay? So this capitalization factor will be computed using interest rate information that is available for time t equal to 0, the starting time. That means I'll be using interest rates as they were prevailing on time t equal to 0 to compute this capitalization factor. Now, in terms of notation, since we are trying to explain the difference between forward price and futures price, let's have different notation for both of them. Forward prices, let them be denoted by capital F, 0, T, where 0 denotes the time at which this price was quoted and capital T denotes the delivery time. Futures prices, lowercase f, again 0, T, quote time, delivery time. Now. I want you to undertake two positions, one in the forward market, this position is available at this quoted price and one in the futures market, it's available at this quoted price. Let both these positions be long positions but let them be in different quantities of the underlying asset. In the forward market, I want you to take a, a, a long forward position on these many units of the underlying asset. I mean units equal to the capitalization factor from 0 to capital T computed using interest rates that were prevailing at time t equal to 0. So for all capitalization factors which were computed at time t equal to 0, I'll mark them with a red asterisk which means that these capitalization factors are known to me when I am standing at time t equal to 0. Okay? Now, the forward position, as I said, it's a long forward on these many units of the underlying asset. Remember this about the forward that it does not have any daily margining. So, therefore, any PL, any profit and loss that you were to realize for the forward, it will come into your account only at time t equal to capital T. So, for this long forward, how much PNL will you make at time t equal to capital T? The PNL will be equal to the number of units, which is this much, that times the change in the forward price between time t equal to 0 and time t equal to capital T. So therefore, this change, I can write it as F t comma t minus F 0 t. Remember, it's the payoff for the long counterparty, which we are in this case. And I am also assuming that by the time I reach time capital T, this forward price would have become equal to the spot price on that day. This is why my PNL looks something like this. That's all you have to do in the forward case. In the futures case, I want you to go long futures on these many units of the underlying asset. This is the capitalization factor from today to tomorrow so from 0 to 1 this was a capitalization factor from 0 all the way till capital T okay the reason I am only working with the one day CF to begin with is because futures they have the daily margining which the forwards don't so let's open up our futures trade on these many units by the time we finish day 0 and the Futures price at the end of day 0 slash the beginning of day 1 is available to us. Let that number be this guy, F1T. Based on this F1T then, the futures will be 
marked to market okay the exchange will calculate my gain slash loss and that gain slash loss will be transferred right away to my margin account so let that gain slash loss be equal to the quantity which is this much that times the change in the futures price which is this much okay now since i'll be in the end comparing the pnl from these two positions in the two different markets i want these two pnls to be both on the same time the same date and that's capital t this pnl it came to my margin account at the end of day 0 slash beginning of day 1 therefore to make it comparable with the pnl for this case i'll have to transport this pnl to time t equal to capital t when i say transport it means that i'll have to reinvest this pnl at the available interest rates on day 1 and when i reinvest then this pnl will grow to a certain amount by time t equal to capital t so to get that final amount after you know, reinvesting at prevailing interest rates all i have to do is take the pnl multiply it with the capitalization factor this one is computed using interest rates at day one and it's from day one to day capital t okay move on to the next day now day one on day one remember that anything to do with day zero is already done so day zero futures position is already closed and the gain slash loss has been put into your account on day one i want you to start with a new futures position this time it is on this quantity of the underlying asset this quantity is basically the capitalization factor between zero and two between zero and time two again computed using the interest rate information at time t equal to zero that's why you have a red asterisk here so by the time you finish day one slash begin day two the exchange it will calculate a gain slash loss which is this much that means the quantity that times the new futures price minus the price that you began with which was f1t and again i ask you to transport this number to time capital t and that you will do by multiplying it with a capitalization factor which is prevailing on day two because this pnl was given to you on the evening of day one hence you will reinvest it on the morning of day two so this is my pnl contribution to the final pnl coming from the trade done on day one you can continue doing this and therefore on the t minus one day i want you to do a trade which is on these many units of the underlying asset and eventually then when you reach time capital t it will give you a pnl which looks something like this again the futures quote on that day i'm assuming it would have converged to the spot on that day so st minus the futures price at which you began with and that is f at t minus one comma t this pnl is already on day t so there is no need for you to multiply it with a capitalization factor okay now what will be the total pnl on this futures trade the one which you have been rebalancing every day you are closing off the trade on one day and opening a new one on the next day the total pnl of this futures position will come out to be the sum of all these pnls coming from each of the individual days in this period okay now let's start with a very simple case and that is the case in which interest rates do not change from one day to the next for that case take a look at these two terms the cf from 0 to 1 that multiplied with cf from 1 to t that means a hop from 0 to 1 and then a big hop from 1 to to t if interest rates don't change then the small hop followed by the big hop actually amounts to just a big hop from zero to capital t therefore if interest rates don't change what i'm saying is that zero to one that capitalization factor this times the capitalization factor from one to t should give you the same capitalization factor from zero to t 
again let's put a star here okay so the product of this and this should give me a cf star 0 to t the product of this and this should also give me cf star 0 to t it's a hop from 0 to 2 and then from 2 to t that amounts to a big hop from 0 to capital t so if every such product were to give you cf star 0 to t you can actually take it common and you can then add all the terms in the bracket it will give you f1 comma t minus f0 comma t plus f2 comma t minus f1 comma t and so on the last term will be s t minus f t minus 1 comma t so therefore what i can do is that i can cancel you know these terms this guy cancels with this this guy will cancel with another f 2 t that comes up here okay and so on in the end what you will find is that you are left with the final pnl that looks something like this cf star 0 to t this times st minus the futures price you began with that is f 0 t okay now if you were to compare these two pnls this guy and this guy they look quite similar the only difference between them is that this pnl works with capital f this pnl it works with lowercase f okay so therefore if the two pnls were different let's assume that this pnl is higher okay just an assumption when will this pnl be higher it will be higher if capital f is lower than lowercase f right so if this pnl is higher an arbitrager will step in the arbitrager will take a long forward position and couple it with a short futures position in the end then he will make money from both these positions combined if too many arbitragers do the same trade they will push up the forward price because they are undertaking long forward positions okay so f 0 t which we assumed is lower than this lowercase f 0 t will now be pushed up and equilibrium gets established again and the capital f becomes equal the lowercase f therefore when interest rates are constant our rule of thumb should be that the forward price which is f 0 t is equal to the futures price lowercase f 0 t now let's do this let's assume that interest rates are random to begin with let's assume that interest rates are completely independent let's assume completely uncorrelated with futures prices so if you were standing at time t equal to zero then on this date all you know is these capitalization factors you know the number of units that you will be placing your futures trades on on every day going forward but what you don't know is the closing futures prices the settlement prices of the futures contract on each of the days to follow that will be random you won't know them also you won't know interest rates on each of the days to follow hence you do not know what these capitalization factors will be so the terms in the bracket are random the terms you know which the bracket is multiplied with that means the capitalization factors these are also random if this random variable is independent or uncorrelated with this random variable then what happens is that the two no, no, the two variables they don't give you a consistent gain or a consistent loss in your futures transaction when i say consistent gain or a consistent loss i'm talking about relative to what the forward would have given you okay it's all relative to the forward if the two are independent that case also boils down to the case where the forward price is equal to or let's say very very close to the futures price the more interesting case is one in which the futures prices they are positively correlated with interest rates now in that case what happens is that when the futures price turns out to be higher on any given day it coincides with the case where interest rates also turn out to be higher remember i told you futures prices and interest rates 
are positively correlated. That means on average, they move in the same direction. When F moves up, interest rates also move up. That means whenever I make a gain in my daily margining, then that gain, when it gets transported to time capital T, it gets transported by multiplying with a high capitalization factor. Whenever I make a loss, when let's say the F1T has let's say gone down, it coincides with the case when interest rates also go down. So therefore, whenever this term in the bracket is negative, when I transport it to capital T, I multiply negative entries with smaller values of CF. So I gain on both fronts. Okay. So again, I'm talking about a gain relative to the forward trade. So therefore, because of this positive correlation, what you would see is that the total PNL in the futures transaction that you did will beat the PNL of the forward transaction. When what will happen then? Arbitrages will be attracted more towards futures. They will undertake a long position in the futures offsetted with a short position in the forward. When that happens, because there are too many market participants undertaking long futures positions, the F0T will start to go up. So therefore, remember this, that when there is a positive correlation between F, lowercase, and interest rates, then F0T will be greater than F0T, the forward price. So, because of this activity from arbitrages, the F0T goes up and it keeps going up till equilibrium is established and the PNL in both these trades becomes equal. Okay? Now, you can easily reason out based on what you already know by now the case of negative correlation. If the term in the bracket and this guy are negatively correlated, whenever this guy is positive, this guy is smaller because interest rates would have gone down. This goes up, interest rates go down, so CF goes down. Okay? Whenever this guy is negative, then this guy would be greater. It will be high because when F goes down, rates go up because of negative correlation. So therefore, your losses are being transported by being multiplied with a big number. Your gains are being transported by being multiplied with a small number. Therefore, relative to the forward trade, the futures trade loses. Therefore, what will happen? The PNL from the futures trade will be lower than the PNL from the forward trade. Arbitragers will step in. They will start going long the forward and short the futures. If there are too many arbitragers doing this trade, because they are doing short futures, the futures price will go down. Because they are doing long forward, the forward price will go up. So in the end, the rule of thumb is that F0T is less than capital F0T whenever there is a negative correlation between futures prices and interest rates. Okay? This is the table which I wanted to highlight based on all the analysis that we did. And this is the takeaway that you should have as far as the exam is concerned. Okay.